Hi again, everybody. This video is sponsored by contribution from Anonymous. Here's her story. Hi, Ali. I've started, I recently started watching your videos and I like your style. So here's my story. I'll try to keep this as short as possible, although the story has the makings of a made for TV movie. In March of 2015, I began dating a man I met online on an online dating site. <clears throat> For the first six weeks, he was love bombing me, and I really fell hard for him. After six weeks or so, he called off. Calls, texts, and sweet messages came to a screeching halt. I couldn't figure out what happened or if I did something wrong. After working up the nerve to ask him if there was a problem, he told me that he didn't have the time to commit to a relationship due to the fact that he was so busy with his new startup company, and it was taking up much of his time. That, in addition to his three children, whom he shared 50 50% custody with his ex-wife. I had no reason to think he was lying to me, so I believed him. After two months, approximately, he came, he came back into my life. We began dating again, and this was from the end of May to the end of August 2015. During that time frame, the relationship mainly consisted of me bending over backward to accommodate his schedule and trying my best to add any additional, trying my best not to add any additional pressure on him due to his heavy workload. This approach seemed to work at the time and he seen, and he knew that he really wanted things to work out between us. He began to complain about money that his developers for his startup, an app, refused to continue working on the app and that he and his business partner had to pay them around 25K to resume working. Simply put, he needed that, he needed money that he didn't have to pay them. He came, never came outright and asked me for money, but started saying things like, if I can't pay my developers, my company will fail and I'll have to move back to the United States. We we're both living in Prague. He knew how much I wanted to be with him, so I offered him, I, I offered to help him out and loan him some money. He said no and that he didn't want the money to come between us. After a month of his complaining and a month of me offering the loan and the money, he agreed. So I foolishly wired him eight grand. That was at the end of August 2015. Predictably, he dumped me right after, starting stating how he wasn't ready for a relationship. I still believed him. Over the next few months, we stayed in touch about the money, and he fed me the usual excuses to delaying paying me back, such as waiting for unpaid invoices, etc. In November, we had dinner. He wanted to try again with me, but he wouldn't. But we would take things slowly. I agreed because I was still in love with him. He dumped me two weeks later. You would think I would have learned my lesson at this point. I was devastated. Turned out that during those two weeks in November, his girlfriend was in Spain, a girlfriend I knew nothing about. I'll get to that part as you keep reading. We continued, we continued to stay in touch because he owed me money. Fast forward to March 2016, my loan has still not been paid back. But I had no reasons to distrust him because he was in contact with me and appeared to be truthful about his business. We met for coffee, and shortly after parting ways, he texted me to say that he was having naughty thoughts about me and began to pursue me over and over the next couple weeks prior to moving to another city for three months as his startup had been accepted into an accelerator program. Shortly after he left, I get a message from another woman. This woman turned out to be a woman he was dating at the same time as I. She asked me if he, let's call him RK, owed me money. My heart sank. While she had red flags about RK and suspected some of his really sh shady behavior, I had no clue about anything. I never once suspected that he was dating another woman. Maybe I just fooled myself. Turns out he owes this woman M around 30K. Her situation is much worse than I. She met his kids, eventually moved in with them. He had her rent, he had her paying his rent before she moved in and she even paid one month alimony to the ex-wife. He took so much from her. After some conversations, it was discovered that he got back together with her. He met her before me at the beginning of August, but continued to date me and fake things until I handed him 8,000 at the end of August. Eventually, the two became, eventually two became three. There was a third woman. He didn't take money from her, but he did try. When he realized that she didn't have money to give give me, he dumped her. He did hurt her very much. 
his tactic to get money from her was to use the fact that she wanted a baby so badly that she told her that he would reverse his bisectomy so they could have a baby together. What a sick fuck. There are three of us. The three of us are now friends and we compared text messages, lies, and what we discovered was nothing short of insanity. The same messages, the same nude pics, the same lies. We became a team. RK dumped M before moving to another city temporarily, but in July he was trying to get her back, probably because he owes her the most money. We got in touch with his business partner who had no idea any of this was going on. RK told told his partner we were investors. Not true. His business partner soon discovered that RK was stealing money for for purse from the stealing company money for personal expenses. At the beginning of August 2016, M had to meet with RK, had to meet RK for dinner after bugging to see her. Up until this point, RK had no idea the three of us women knew the truth and even met up several times. The three of us arranged that the third woman and I would crash their dinner date and confront him. When the eve of the ambush arrived, it was glorious. I also managed to get most of it on video too, which I will share with you, but please don't publish the link under the video. He sat there for two hours while the three of us interrogated and humiliated him. I thought for sure he would get up and leave when he realized what was happening. After this evening and after using aggressive tactics, I was repaid most of my loan. There's a balance of 1K remaining. Even after that evening, RK is still trying to get M back. He has no shame. For some reason, though, I can't let my anger go. I'm worried that he's managing to fool his business partner again and other around him, others around him. I'm actually worried that M might take him back. That is my gut feeling. I am torn between letting this go or making what he did public as to warn any woman what, what he, that he comes in contact with him. Someone like him shouldn't should get shouldn't get away with what he he was is doing. He hates me. He won't even email me to deal with my loan balance. All my correspondence has been with his business partner. Anyway, this is getting too long. Please keep my name anonymous. Just call me Karma. I can't wait to hear your take on this. Keep up the good work. What I would say to you is this, Karma. If you can get out of this, losing a thousand dollars, do it. Because this guy is just running a narcissistic Ponzi scheme. That's all it is. And he's doing it with his dick. He probably has the has the innate ability to get women to fall in love with them, much like a gigolo. And he's using the money, the women in his life, as a Ponzi scheme to pay off one another. Love bombing in. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty, pretty original. It's a different way. It's a different way to gigolo. I mean, what he has set up here is a narcissistic Ponzi scheme. What I would say about M, if she is dumb enough to take him back, let her. You cannot continue fighting a battle for a woman who is fully aware of who he is, what he's done, and what he is capable of at this point. Now, as far as exposing him to the world and other women, I think you absolutely should do that. You do that by not being anonymous, sharing the video of the confrontation. For whatever reason, you don't want to share it. It'd probably be make another great video. It's up to you. It's up to you. See, these guys realize when women fall for them. Um, they have a lot of power. Um, you obviously fell for him. He acted like he fell for you, but he didn't give a shit. You ever dealt with people in a Ponzi scheme? Like dealing with Amway or any of these other fucking um, multi-level markets? They'll tell you anything. Fast talkers, and once they have your number, they don't leave you alone. This is just a narcissistic Ponzi scheme. Using one woman to pay off the other and try to try to get ahead. In the meantime, he's stealing from his own company and his own business partner. Look, if M takes him back at this point, it's on her. 
You cannot lose any more sleep over that. If you get out of this only losing a thousand dollars, you got lucky. But if you have the ability to expose him to the world so he doesn't take in some other woman, that's something I would seriously consider doing because that helps the innocent as well. Because this guy is going to focus on somebody who's somebody who's been abused by narcissists in the past and would be susceptible. Okay, the other thing you need to do is figure out what your root cause is and then let, what left you susceptible to him in the first place. So, thank you for your contribution. Thank you for your story. I really appreciate it. It's a good one. Thank you to everybody uh, watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comments section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, you have a narcissist you'd like to expose, or a topic you'd like me to cover, you know what to do with the PayPal and my email links in the description box. I'll have the video right back to you. This is Ollie Matthews. Thanks for watching. See you all again soon.